Buenos días con todos y con todas. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the webinar on, Intel on smart technologies for waste. Uh, at the bottom of your screen, you can see a world icon and you can find the access for simultaneous interpretation in Spanish, English, and Portuguese. This uh, event will be divided in three stages. Uh, first, Abdel Rim will talk about the innovation agenda on waste management uh, uh, by the ITP. Uh, later on, we'll have David Bitterman, CEO of the Solid Waste Association of North America, will tell us about um, innovation and technologies for uh, waste management. And uh, Roland uh, Eladramush will talk about uh, uh, the process of digital transition in the uh, waste sector that is uh, driven by this bank. And then we'll uh, present uh, pilot uh, project cases uh, in Latin America and the uh, Caribbean. N Nicholas Clarence uh, will be talking about the use of drones to control and manage uh, uh, and uh, disposal points in Macarena Olivares from the municipality of Renca in Chile will tell us about the transition of this municipality to all digitization of uh, waste collection. And uh, we'll go into the Q&A uh, stage then, but first, uh, some minutes about challenges on um, digital technologies. We have designed for domicile services, startups, and emerging companies that work uh, with these tools. And now I pass the word to Natalia Laguyas, a senior specialist at IDB Lab, who will welcome us uh, concerning innovation services. Thank you very much, Natalia. Good morning, everybody. This I'm very glad that we can have an event uh, sponsored by the Alliance on Innovation Services tackles with um, digital technologies for improving uh, waste collection and management. Access uh, to basic uh, services in many countries is a big challenge to achieve people's well-being. Applying technology and innovation is an opportunity to close those gaps in service provision so that they are safe, equitable, and uh, a quality service. Robotics, uh, in uh, artificial intelligence, internet of things and other technologies are also applicable to improve efficiency in managing uh, solid waste. However, although digital technology uh, has revolutionized how we see and manage uh, solid waste, this innovation has not gotten to many places in our region, therefore, and because of the different uh, challenges the region has concerning uh, basic service uh, and safe service provision for all is that IDB uh, is driving this alliance with two external partners to promote the development um, of um, innovating uh, solutions on water management and salt waste management. We want smart, inclusive, and sustainable services um, with a focus on solutions from uh, service providers in Latin America and the Caribbean. Um, Innovation SERS is financed by the uh, Swiss uh, government, uh, by SECO, um, the Republic of Korea through uh, uh, it's Ministry of the Environment and the Government of Israel, also uh, direct contributions by IDB Lab and the Division of Water and Sanitation from IDP. And uh, uh, Innovation SERS tackles with the uh, challenges and the different uh, regional diagnoses made by the bank. Where there we can see what are the barriers and opportunities for innovation in the sectors. Um, and it's not only funding projects, but also generating knowledge, um, disseminating knowledge so that more entities who provide services in the region can be interested in innovating and adopting new solutions. At the same time, we motivate the innovative um, private sector, particularly the startups, to leverage uh, their digital technologies in the sector. Um, 
it's approaching these actors that will allow us to have innovation at scale for benefiting populations in Latin America and the Caribbean. When we generate these ecosystems and we uh, generate um, supply and demand, that is one of the priorities we'll have, we have in the alliance. Uh, as Pablo says, we'll tell you about uh, the challenge on uh, smart technologies we have for you. Um, with no more to say, I welcome you to this webinar. Thank you for being with us. And uh, now we, uh, the panelists will have the floor. Thank you very much. Hello, good morning. My name is Alfredo Rim. I'm a specialist on solid waste at the IDB based in Washington. Uh, and I work on uh, solid waste uh, and innovation in our operations. I'd like to tell you what we have done, how we view the innovation issue in the sector and uh, uh, some products we're developing, um, that some that are in the pipeline. And um, I'll tell you about the panorama of this industry for questions and answers. You can leave your questions in the icon uh, that says Q&A, and we have interpretation in Spanish, English, and Portuguese. You just have to uh, click on interpretation in the interpretation icon. How do we see innovation at the bank? How do we see uh, this opportunity? It has a broad aspect. We uh, are taking a look at the show short term and then a mid and long term. And we think there will be fundamental changes in, in terms of information management. There is absence in measuring traceability in service uh, supply. How much waste you collect, how much gets to the landfill, how much is being recycled. Those metrics are theoretically existing, but in practice, uh, very absent in the systems. Lack of uh, data makes it difficult to generate uh, improvement plans and reach reasonable targets in the industry. It makes it difficult to uh, have a much uh, healthier system. Um, we need information with right uh, metrics to be able to make fundamental changes in this sector. Uh, from linear economy to circular economy, where material flows and um, performances are essential. The IDP is therefore an ally in the region. We do uh, waste uh, projects in this uh, uh, industry, and we bring innovation as support and guide to have better results in planning. In that regard, we are allies for all our clients and the industry in the region. Uh, we also have alliances among players um, that can support each other with positive synergies. And at the end of the session, we'll talk about the challenge that has already been mentioned concerning digital technologies. And we also get information and data as um, uh, a, a foundation for all processes. And we'll tell you what we're doing in that line. Next one, please. This is a general element. The IDB supports or is present in these actions, but is also obviously um, um, in the conversation between waste and innovation, uh, it's very important for uh, compliance with targets. We have five fundamental points where we can get improvements, uh, measuring and collection data through instruments and software. Uh, the gadgets, of course, uh, are there. We're at an interesting point in history of waste uh, uh, management, we can measure things that couldn't be measured uh, before. So making decisions and ad hoc regulations are getting into a surprising stage and um, full of hope. It will allow us to use uh, uh, these uh, tools and improve the sector fundamentally. Um, and we can take circular economy to become a reality. Also generating indicators, KPIs are necessary. We need data to be measured, to be used, and digitization of information is fundamental here. Planning and benchmarking is also useful by generating uh, networks and data. Uh, uh, 
information systems for reporting, for decision making, for understanding how things are in um, the management system. And in a mid, at a midterm, we have the Paris Agreements, SDGs, um, and they require results to be measured. Uh, so we need uh, governments to participate in uh, all systems to include um, legal and evaluation systems. Uh, the bank has um, guidelines concerning um, solid waste, and this is our agenda for the sector. Um, it, the model is circular economy against five points, uh, universal access to um, uh, appropriate waste uh, management, decarbonization of the industry, uh, making sure it is adapted to climate change. Uh, we have a big opportunity with information, citizenship, governance, and funding, and, and access uh, universal access to waste management info has to do with uh, uh, technological innovation, data, equipment, uh, follow-up uh, of these systems. We have examples taken from a blog and um, innovation will promote uh, new technologies, drive a uh, circular economy, and work on the capacities uh, proposing innovation spaces to uh, through experimentation, which is something the IDB does uh, on a day-to-day -day base. We have uh, collection, dynamic routes, uh, uh, online uh, monitoring, et cetera. Now to close here, i tell you about four actions we're working in. Um, you have the QR there to take a look at the blog on innovation source uh, concerning um, waste. Paula Guerra prepared this blog and it's a very recommendable reading. Uh, we also have operations in the region. Our traditional operations are now loaded and reinforced with innovation and uh, two instruments or products that we are generating are the uh, waste hub uh, and circular economy uh, with uh, platform data and the Jersey rating, which is a tool for self-evaluation and uh, continuous improvement. Jersey rating is this tool we have been working in. Uh, those who are familiarized with, with the aqua rating will see this mechanism as proposing operators analyze um, their status and promote solutions. Uh, take a look at figures, analyze the situation, and um, see how they're managing waste, how they manage their companies and promote uh, improvements. So this is a platform we are creating in this regard. There is a self-evaluation, uh, monitoring, and follow-up, and um, plans for action and improvement. We have the work plan at the bottom. David uh, Bitterman will talk in a few minutes uh, for SWANA. We made a study with them on uh, available technologies. He will talk about that. We have generated KPIs, reference indicators, and benchmarking for good practices. We have worked on all these technologies generating this Jersey rating methodology. We'll work with pilots and companies in the region to test it and then promote its implementation for all players, companies, and um, institutions related with waste management in the region. Now, about the waste hub in circular economy, we're very glad about this. Um, in this scheme of circles, we have this on the left, these uh, catasters about the status of waste in the region require uh, batch work at a certain point, but taking advantage of the situation in the region with uh, much better um, information management thanks to uh, tools coming from innovation we're generating. Uh, um, data management system. It is reflected in the base of date in the database and a platform for waste. Uh, at the bottom, you can see results the publications will have this kind of uh, graph and you'll see a very dynamic platform that will allow the system to be live and continuously developed. Uh, we'll launch it uh, very soon. 
and we'll tell you about it. Uh, concerning cooperation and operations in the region, well, that's our usual work at the bank. We have uh, several projects in different countries incorporating technology, innovation on um, data management. Uh, we have technical cooperation with uh, Montevideo, Intendencia Montevideo, for example. This is technical cooperation for um, uh, technological innovation and uh, behavioral change for traceability and monitoring the role of citizens as part of the population. We also have a technical cooperation with Korea using technology to improve quality efficiency and circularity of waste. In the case of Argentina, we are um, trying to support them on regulate le, regulatory aspects and also on jersey ratings so that their projects are more sustainable in time uh, with a, a more empowered operator that is more trained and um, um, harnesses all the techniques and uh, innovation elements we have so they become more robust. So, so thank you. I'll leave you with uh, David Bitterman from Swana so he can tell you about a very interesting study we worked uh, on. Thank you, El thank you, Alfredo. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is David Bitterman. I am the executive director of Swana. Um, if you could please advance uh, to my first slide. Excellent. Uh, Swana has been working with um, the IDB now for uh, several years. Uh, Swana is the largest waste and recycling association in both the United States and Canada. And in fact, our activities include a Caribbean chapter uh, that is uh, primarily in Puerto Rico, but we do have members throughout the Caribbean and some members in Latin America. And our members are individuals. It's not a government agency. It's not a a solid waste company, it's people who become members of SWANA to gain access to our network of uh, national and international solid waste expertise. Uh, SWANA is the national member to ISWA, the International Solid Waste Association, and has been so for several decades. And that is one of our primary links to global international solid waste issues, which of course have become much more important over the past 10 years, 15 years, as climate change, global warming, and the global plastic problem uh, has become on the environmental agenda. SWANA has a particular interest in being of assistance in Latin America and the Caribbean. We have provided landfill training for Colombia and Chilean solid waste managers. We did that during the pandemic in 2020, and we provided some training in Belize in the fall of 2022 um, through the IDB. Uh, that was both for landfill and transfer station uh, owners and operators. And we more broadly participate in the U.S. government's efforts to help modernize goods and services um, in the environmental space, including solid waste management in Latin America and the Caribbean. And I serve on a U.S. advisory panel in that area. Next slide. So innovation. Innovation is something that we're doing here in the United States. Uh, as rapidly as we can. Companies and local governments who are the service providers are embracing the use of technology and innovation to make the entire solid waste management system from collection through disposal uh, more efficient. Sometimes that doesn't involve what we think of as technology. It's not gadgets, it's not digital. It's something as simple as selecting the right truck for the route. Uh, which is not always the cheapest truck, but might be the cheapest over the long-term lifespan of that truck. You need data to understand that. And so what Alfredo mentioned about data being foundational is absolutely true, and I'm going to refer back to that several times. In the United States over the last 15 years, one of the innovations we've seen is the introduction of natural gas-fueled trucks. So the majority of new trucks put into service in the United States each year in the solid waste sector are fueled by natural gas, not by diesel. And at the same time, we're starting to see electric vehicles being introduced as pilots in a number of cities to test whether EV trucks can be used in hot locations like Florida and colder locations like Minnesota and mountainous locations um, in the Western United States. Two areas that I'm gonna speak about in a little more detail where we've seen innovation are telematics um, and RFID chips 
in the collection containers. Next slide. So what telematics. Telematics are systems that are deployed on trucks that generate data that allow uh, companies and local governments to make get more data and make better decisions. So telematic systems capture the speed of the truck, how much fuel the truck is using, whether maintenance is being done properly. It can be used to route the truck. It can be used to do service verification. When you take all of this information and you start to have a smart collection system, you can improve productivity. Improved productivity can mean less cost per customer. It can mean more efficient service. Um, but what's really important is not to simply love telematics because it's a shiny new uh, digital system. Companies and local governments need to evaluate the data and then do the coaching of the drivers to make sure that you're getting the benefits of the telematics. So different local governments are going to have different technical capabilities, but also need to be willing to make the investment in the one-on-one -on -one coaching to take advantage of telematics. Next slide. Similarly, we're seeing widespread introduction of what are called RFID chips, radio frequency identification chips that are embedded in containers so everyone un better understands how much waste is being generated, when the waste is being generated, and design more efficient routes. It is, of course, better to have five trucks that are full at the end of the day than to run 10 half-empty trucks. This reduces greenhouse gas emissions, it reduces cost, and it means improved safety. And also, importantly, it means that if you have an RFID chip in a container and that container is telling you it's full, you can send the truck out to collect it and not then, as, as opposed to having people simply put excess garbage around the container, which is, of course, a major problem. Next slide. So we're seeing some of these smart bin systems being introduced in the United States. New York City, the largest city in North America, in, in the United States, um, has recently made investments in smart bins to improve collection. Um, if you've been to New York City, you probably recognize the picture on the left. That's the open waste litter container. That is the old litter container. Those are being replaced by these smart containers that you see on the right side. Uh, it reduces litter. It means that the rats that plague New York City can't get in there. And it provides data to the department on how frequently waste needs to be collected. So this is a very exciting innovation in New York City. Next slide. Smart bins are also being introduced in Latin America. In Santiago, uh, the Parque Metrop Metropolitano is the largest urban park in Latin America. And they were having a problem with their open litter bins that overflowed and were attracting uh, stinging wasps. And the park worked with one of Swana's, the companies that Swana is engaged with, to install smart bins that can hold more waste, reduce the frequency of collection by an incredible amount from 20 collections a week to some between three and four and deter the wasps and improve the quality of the park. And this case study is being included in the uh, report that uh, we have prepared for the IDB. Next slide. So now moving over to the recycling space. I attended a conference yesterday where I spoke about uh, recycling and this is a very important topic in the United States. So between 2008 and 2018, the big technical innovation in recycling centers was optical sorters or optical scanners, which can identify materials for further processing. So instead of having a person sorting different types of paper or different types of plastic, the scanner does it much more effectively. And so we had recycling facilities install have two or three scanners. Now, over the past five years, in response to the changing recycling market, we're seeing an, both an acceleration in the use of optical scanners and recycling facilities. Yesterday, I learned that new recycling facilities are having 16 to 20 optical scanners installed. But we're also seeing robots installed. Robots are being installed because they can do both positive picking and negative picking. Let me just briefly mention what that means. You can program the robot to pick what you want. So it can pick out all the valuable uh, metal, or it can pick out all of the cardboard, or it can do negative picking. It can pick out the bad things, the things that aren't recyclable, that clog up the system. People, at least in the United States, 
throw away a lot of things that are not recyclable, but people think they're recyclable. Garden hoses, uh, dirty diapers, uh, plastic bags. Those things are not recyclable in modern re US recycling facilities. And so robots can be used to sort that material. Robots are, are more costly than people on the front end, but are cost effective over the long term. It is difficult to get workers in the United States. And the job of working in a recycling facility is, I don't wanna say it's unsafe, but there are major safety risks. And the local governments and companies that are making these investments are seeing high quality bales that you can get more money for and lower long-term costs. And now robots 2.0 is happening where artificial intelligence is being added that makes the robots smarter. Next slide. In addition to at processing, we're seeing the use of technology at, at landfills. So US landfills have embraced drone technology to better monitor operations. You can better calculate how you're using your airspace. Are you compacting the waste as good as possible? You can improve the efficiency of your landfill gas recovery system, which is very, very important. It helps you with compliance with applicable EPA and other emission reduction rules. And if you're planning to build a new cell or expand, uh, drones can be used for top topography and closure plans. And of course, this is not just happening in the United States. In preparation for our, our session today, I did a little research and learned that back in 2015 in Buenos Aires at the Norte 3 landfill, drone technology was being used extensively. Uh, last slide. Um, finally, our report discusses in some detail the use of business intelligence tools, BI tools. So business intelligence tools are simply software programs that gather data from a wide variety of data sets that allow people to make better and faster business decisions. Uh, we've seen experience uh, where companies are making investments in BI, and what that does is it brings 10, 20 different data streams together in a single system that everybody at the company can access that allows for better decision-making. And Swana believes, and our report concludes, that BI holds a lot of promise for improving and making more efficient solid waste management in Latin America and the Caribbean. So finally, our recommendations, next slide. Thank you very much for your time and uh, look forward to the questions. And now let me uh, turn it over to our next speaker, Roland Ramush from the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. Thank you very much, David. Thank you. Good morning and good afternoon. Um, thank you for uh, the introduction and um, welcome to this uh, webinar. My name is Roland Ramos and I'm a sector specialist on solid waste in uh, at the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the EBRD based in the HQ in uh, London. So I have a similar role than uh, Alfredo and his team. I'm an engineer and helping our banking teams and uh, clients to uh, prepare and implement uh, investment projects in the solid waste sector. Next slide, please. Just a few words on the EBRD. So EBRD was established in 1991 after the fall of the Berlin uh, Wall in 19. Uh, 89 and uh, the EBRD at the moment is owned by 69 uh, countries and we have uh, an annual uh, bank investment of uh, more than 10 billion um, uh, euros. Uh, last year was a record year even higher around 13 uh, billion euros investments in more than 430 uh, projects. Next slide please. So we're also an international financial institution, uh, but compared to IDB, of course, we are working in a different uh, geographical area, as you can see on this slide. Um, parts of Northern Africa, like Egypt, uh, Tunis, Mar uh, Tunisia, Morocco, the Western Bal Balkans, Turkey, uh, Eastern European countries, parts of them, part of the European Union, uh, the Caucasus region, uh, Ukraine, uh, Central Asia, and the most Eastern country we're working with currently is uh, Mongolia. Next slide, please. 
I am part of the sustainable infrastructure group within the bank, and we are roughly covering 50% of our uh, annual uh, business volume. And uh, the SIG business revolves around the main three subsectors, uh, energy, transport, and municipal and environmental infrastructure, where solid waste management is part of. Next slide, please. EBRD identified in its strategic capital framework uh, covering period 2021 to 25, uh, digitalization as one of the main three key themes uh, beside uh, green investments and beside uh, uh, facilitating inclusive investments. Uh, and we started uh, in 2021 with the first digital uh, approach and uh, are now covering digitalization and trying to uh, implement uh, digitalization and digital transformation in our investment projects. Next slide, please. Uh, as we heard already from uh, Alfredo and, and, and David, uh, similar to uh, the areas uh, you are working in, in our countries of operation, uh, we have the same challenges. So uh, usually in, in many countries of operation, our waste management systems are in a survival mode. Uh, that means they're basically uh, struggling to write to provide basic uh, infrastructure or basic waste management uh, services. And uh, with our investment projects, uh, we try to uh, follow an incremental, a stepwise uh, approach where uh, we try to start with uh, a first basic solid waste infrastructure. That means close the dump site, new sanitary landfills, upgrade of the waste collection uh, infrastructure and stepwise introduce or uh, help our clients to uh, introduce uh, separation at the source and other uh, technologies to divert waste from being landfilled. Um, digitalization here, of course, can play a major role in uh, this development path in this uh, evolution of waste management system, either as a top up or as a standalone investment. But in any case, digitalization can facilitate the shift to green and integrated waste management systems. Next slide, please. So we heard already uh, from the previous speakers some drivers and inhibitors of uh, digitalization, specifically in the uh, waste sector. Uh, as we all know, urbanization and the linked increasing waste quantities in urban agglomeration uh, agglomerations and in parallel in many countries of operations where uh, EBRD is working. On the other hand, uh, rural areas being uh, like less populated, this uh, brings a lot of pressure on the collection systems in uh, urban agglomerations, but also in uh, uh, rural, uh, in the countryside, let's put it that way, where of course specific uh, digital uh, solutions uh, that David was introducing uh, already can help uh, to uh, tackle these challenges. Of course, cost pressure and climate crisis these days and the necessity to reduce uh, emissions uh, in the sector are additional drivers for uh, going digital. On the other hand, inhibitors, of course, are to a certain extent capital expenditures, uh, like not all of the systems that were um, introduced and that you can see here on this slide, uh, for example, uh, in, in the example section uh, are uh, reasonable to be implemented in uh, our countries of operation, uh, not only because of uh, the investment costs, but also uh, sometimes or very often actually, uh, the digital ecosystem where these uh, uh, solutions are embedded is missing. And also we're facing a, a lack of digital literacy of those who actually run and operate uh, the system. Not uh, uh, and um, important to mention, of course, uh, uh, cybersecurity as an important uh, question uh, to be answered when implementing this system systems. Uh, next question, uh, next slide, please. Um, we in our team in uh, SIG um, tackle uh, digitalization and the transition to more uh, digital applications the following way. Uh, we have uh, five sectors in our SIG team that are at the moment uh, covered by specific sector specific uh, assignments uh, where consultants work on specific sector specific roadmaps uh, and uh, collect a technical solution uh, in a digital uh, compendium 
in order to support uh, digitalization and include these applications in our uh, investment projects. Next slide, please. The starting point of, of our approach in our sectors is uh, a self-assessment of uh, the client. And the client could be, for example, uh, public utility companies or private uh, service providers. Uh, and this is uh, carried out together either with the bank's engineer like myself uh, and uh, or specific consultants working uh, with the clients. In this uh, tool, the clients define uh, certain key key performance indicators, meaning areas they would like to uh, improve via digitalization uh, and conduct a self-assessment in six, in six major business uh, components in six uh, specific categories I'm going to introduce you uh, in the next slide. Uh, how is this linked? Uh, the tool includes uh, this digital compendium, which is a the actual description of each uh, identified uh, technology uh, and links these technologies with the contribution to specific uh, key performance indicators um, identified by uh, the client. And the output of this system is a first ranked list of technologies based, based on how they uh, can contribute to the desired uh, KPI improvement. Next slide, please. Here is a, um, you can see a screenshot of this um, uh, digital digital uh, maturity assessment tool. So in this uh, Excel-based self-assessment, uh, the client set priorities or goals they want to achieve with digitalization via 16 performance indicators, uh, via a drop-down list, for example, uh, as you can see here, uh, improve quality of service delivery or reduce operational expenditures, uh, reduce risks uh, or increase the lifespan of assets. So uh, potential uh, or clients uh, actually uh, uh, define uh, what is important in their, let's say, digital transformation uh, uh, journey, and uh, then assess along uh, specific business categories, the digital maturity levels they are actually in, and which digital maturity levels they want to achieve with specific uh, investments and uh, these digital maturity levels are uh, in the range of uh, five levels. Level one would be the lowest initiating level uh, where actually nothing or not that much is implemented and level five would be uh, the highest digital maturity level. Next slide, please. Another screenshot uh, um, in uh, from this uh, Excel tool. So um, the example I'm showing you is uh, one specific business component that is called work and asset management beside operations, customer management, safety and environment, corporate services and cybersecurity. So you can see on this slide, these five digital maturity level and in the red rectangle, uh, the possibility for the client to actually assess together with a consultant and the engineer what digital maturity uh, score they are actually in what level they actually have and what's the desired uh, digital maturity score. And for all of these uh, six uh, business components, there is a range of questions uh, and the client can see uh, where they are. For example, if you take a look at the middle one, uh, waste collection, transportation regarding the fleet, uh, level one would be that uh, actually waste collection data uh, is not collected at all and waste collection vehicles are not tracked at all. So there is uh, nothing installed, no uh, GIS uh, systems uh, and uh, they can move to uh, level five, which means in that case, all waste collection vehicles have a range of sensors installed uh, and this data is fully embedded and used in real time to optimize route planning and scheduling. Next slide, please. The digital compendium itself um, will be developed by the consultants. So I think similar than what David uh, was doing in his uh, assignment. So we have a standardized form with uh, 18 questionnaires where uh, actually the consultants reached out to technology providers using these questionnaires and uh, collecting uh, data uh, around the bullet points you can see on the right what are the benefits, uh, what's the technology read readiness, what would be uh, uh, costs of these solutions, the required digital skills, and so on and so forth. So uh, up to now, 
uh, the uh, consultants identified uh, 114 relevant technologies and applications in the solid uh, waste sector. Next slide, please. Um, I have to say, of course, that uh, the whole assignment is still work in progress uh, for that holds true for uh, the solid waste sector, but also for the other sectors where we are doing uh, this uh, uh, exercise. Uh, you can see one challenge with the compendium categories was, for example, uh, to uh, uh, identify the groups, uh, uh, the technology groups, as, for example, different um, applications can belong to multiple groups, and also to identify solutions uh, where, for example, our clients have no direct influence on, such as specific waste prevention technologies uh, like AI based kitchen and food waste reduction possibilities or uh, manufacturing based applications designed for recycling and so on. And for uh, illustrative reasons, we also try to link, and you can see that on the left, uh, these uh, digital compendium categories to specific uh, order of chronology in uh, the waste management systems. Again, work in pro uh, progress, but we will reach out uh, to you when uh, this is uh, finalized. Next slide, please. So the actual output of this digital matur uh, maturity assessment tool is then, as you can see uh, on, on this uh, graphic here, a ranking of specific uh, technologies uh, based on the uh, KPIs and the self-assessment that was conducted by the client. So uh, the tool generates a list of technologies implementation ranked by impact on the KPIs. And of course, it's possible to add specific uh, graphs and information regarding the costs or digital uh, maturity. But this is a work in progress. Next slide, please. Uh, in parallel, uh, one important output then uh, will be the roadmaps for uh, digitalization. On the one hand, a, a report that then uh, uh, consider the steps and actions that need to be taken to achieve digital maturity in the waste sector in the specific uh, uh, for the uh, specific client and cover for example process benefits uh, challenges actions to progress to the next level uh, of digitalization to the next maturity level cybersecurity considerations and for example what role uh, international financial institutions public and private sector can play in this journey um, with this, uh, next slide, please. I'm uh, sparing you this because I think it's more uh, interesting and important for uh, the colleagues from uh, IDP, how actually this toolkit is embedded uh, in our project preparation and uh, uh, implementation scheme. Next slide, please. Thank you very much for uh, uh, your attention and thank you very much for the invite. Uh, happy to answer some questions. Thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias. Ah, much, muchísimas gracias a nuestros. Thank panelists. you very much to our panelists who uh, generally talked about different digital technologies on waste management. Now we're going to case studies in Latin America and the Caribbean. Macarena Olivares from the Renca Municipality. Macarena, we have 10 minutes. Thank you very much. It's an honor for me to be part in, of this seminar. My name is Macarena Olivares. I'm Director of the Environment in the Renca Municipality. I'll share my presentation with you. Okay. Well, I will talk about four issues. First of all, the communal context, where we are located, and what is the context of the municipal management uh, we lead, local policies related to sustainability, the technical approach concerning the use of technologies in uh, waste management, and the community approach. I will talk about the hackathon project uh, last uh, month that has to do with the implementation and search for technologies to face everything um, that has to do with waste management. Next one, please. First of all, I'd like to comment that Renca is a community in the metropolitan region of Santiago in Chile. It's a community 
of 24.2 square kilometers. Its inhabitants are 162,517, according to uh, the census. So there are 45,660. Um, uh, houses uh, in our community and 75,200 uh, homes or households. Um, uh, in um, this has been determined uh, by the census and it also determines the degree of vulnerability in our community. There's 10.16% of poverty. Uh, this is uh, income poverty and 24.52 is a multi-dimensional poverty. This is very important because we will see the kind of uh, waste we manage. And it also um, gives us some guidance to approach uh, technologies uh, we need to implement. Okay. Among our local policies related to sustainability and managing uh, waste management, uh, we defined to the, the need to progress in an urban social and economic transformation of Renca. The approach uh, is related with uh, a sustainable and resilient uh, community. Uh, we are driving this as from urban planning that integrates the care of the environment for building a sustainable and resilient commune and face climate change effects. We understand that urban justice is related with environmental justice as well. Why is this so relevant? Because everything we implement in this framework has to do uh, in this case with waste management. The idea is to improve the living conditions of our community. And we want to minimize uh, illegal waste uh, sites in our territory. Uh, they exist in Renca as in other places in our country. Now, how have we progressed in everything that has to do on um, sustainability? Um, and how can we um, deal with this? Uh, we decided to have a roadmap to develop all these instruments that will guide us and that include action plans with very concrete initiatives. In 2017, we started our local energy strategy. We now have a local plan on climate change. Our community has a community development plan that is that has a sustainability approach. Uh, we also have a strategy for sustainable mobility. We are part of the Race to Zero um, program. We also have uh, new environmental ordinances. We have updated our communal regulatory plan. And uh, we also have a local strategy for water efficiency. Finally, uh, just a little time ago in 2022, we are also into the international commitment of race to resilience concerning uh, solid waste. All of this is related with uh, other instruments with an approach to uh, have um, comprehensive waste management. Why are we in Race to Zero in Race to Resilience, to international commitments? Because they are commitments that advance in comprehensive management that is efficient. Um, we have defined uh, that we need to assume these voluntary commitments and we will report on the progress we make, uh, in this case specifically about solid waste management. We wanted to uh, be positioned as a model in reference in urban social and economic transformation with a sustainability seal that will incorporate initiatives that will allow us towards adaptation and mitigation facing climate change effects. We wanted to partake in a big global alliance to face the climate uh, emergency 
committing with initiatives that will allow to reduce uh, GHG uh, emissions uh, to 2030. We understand that uh, waste generation generates lots of um, emissions. This is, we think it is important to manage them. We want to strengthen our link with international, domestic, and local actors that promote sustainability through public-private strategic alliances that will allow to face specific climate actions. We want to be carbon neutral, and we want to be resilient. Um, we wanted also to establish an, uh, a coordinating role that will facilitate sustainable development by all community actors. When we talk about all community actors, we talk about the population, but also companies. Renka has two industrial poles that are very important in the metropolitan region, and they generate solid waste and emissions. Uh, and we want to establish uh, all actors uh, as um, participants to go ahead in this plan. How do we face this job? What about our strategy to progress towards uh, uh, carbon neutrality and resilience? Um, we want to be such a commune in these six uh, areas. We have uh, Comprehensive waste management, it's very relevant for us, and it is related uh, when in it is related to other uh, action uh, realms in all the initiatives we develop. Uh, we want to be based on nature, for example. These are solutions based on nature, and uh, it is also related with sustain uh, sustainable mobility or power sustainability. All these are fundamental because it, this is how we decided to incorporate. Next one, please. The use of technologies in our daily work. Next one, please. Okay. Why did we decide to incorporate technology? Thanks to this approach and strategy to advance towards to carbon neutrality and resilience and also uh, being sustainable, we analyzed the need to incorporate technology in our waste management contracts. And this is summarized in these four points. First of all, uh, the complexity of daily control and monitoring uh, of a contract implementation. We have a number of uh, third-party contracts uh, for waste management, and the municipality has to supervise oversee if they are complying with their job. So it, it was complex and difficult. And if we have 10 or 20 trucks um, that are being displaced in our territory, we need to oversee the work they do. And uh, having human resources for that was a bit complex. So we decided to look for an efficient way to uh, achieve this. There's also inefficiency in managing claims. Oftentimes we get claims and managing uh, those claims uh, concerning waste management is not appropriate. And the community has this right. Therefore, there was inefficiency concerning how we faced uh, claims on waste management. Uh, and we also also to better manage our fleet so it could become more efficient in collection of waste management. Uh, we have seen in former presentations how some services and technologies can be adopted or embraced to better manage um, water, I'm sorry, um, um, solid waste um, collection. And we also wanted to be in the cutting edge 
approach. You have three minutes, Macarena. So today we have four contracts. These are uh, outsourced contracts uh, for uh, waste management. This is collection and transportation. Um, uh, we also have tracks for uh, branches and other uh, large um, waste uh, and others. Um, in 2017, we incorporated in our contracts technology related to GPS and televigilance cameras in each truck. We also included an online monitoring uh, system so the community could see how far uh, the, the collection truck was uh, from their um, household. Why did we do this and what were the main benefits? Uh, we were we became better in um, oversight efficiency through the monitoring uh, system of uh, online cameras and GPS. Um, we, you can see that on the right. This is how we can see the different trucks uh, that uh, work in the community. This platform is updated every two minutes and uh, the people can see how close the trucks are. And we also have cameras related to this operation system. And we have uh, oversight uh, from uh, our top desks. Um, this is also recorded online. And it, it, it is as if our supervisor were in the truck itself while they collect uh, uh, waste. Uh, as for improving claims, since there is um, a film that has been um, um, kept, uh, uh, we can see the video and audio. And when we have a claim, what we ask the community is to tell us the day and the date and time we check in our recorded videos and we can uh, answer the community concerning these claims. So we have become more efficient in that too. In this context, what are the main challenges um, to progress concerning our next uh, tender? We're analyzing the tender documents and we want to improve uh, internet quality uh, signal to improve uh, the efficiency of our system. We want to increase technological equipment to allow for claim management by the community. We want to increase the number of trucks also and the number of cameras in uh, two and GPS in one of them. Uh, we also want to update and improve uh, monitoring through the program called follow your truck uh, or uh, some or something um, something you can see um, in um, in the former slide we have to finish well just to tell you that the hackathon was an open invitation to the community so they could think about how to solve micro um uh, land, uh, I'm sorry, waste, uh, informal waste uh, in spots. And this has to do with technology. The idea was to create a platform to recover waste that is illegally thrown in different uh, sectors. Uh, we are in the process of implementing that platform. We're doing monitoring to the team uh, of the community that uh, got uh, this contract and uh, we are planning to make a new call so as to work uh, in the 2.0 of this uh, version. Uh, um, I'm very glad to be here. Thank you very much. I'm here for your questions.
Muchas gracias y dejamos con ustedes ahora a Nicolás Clarence. Thank you very much. Now we have Nicolás Clarence who will talk about the use of technology. In this case, it's drones and water and sanitation. Thank you, Nicolás. You have seven minutes, please. Uh, bueno, Thank you very much, Alfredo. Well, my presentation is in English, so I will change. Today about how drone mapping works in the water and sanitation sector. We're going to talk about some examples, uh, particularly in Santo Domingo. And then if we have time in seven minutes, we'll talk about some additional case studies. Next slide. The quick background, I'm a geographer. Uh, I started Geotropic. I started working for the IDB for the strategic planning uh, sector in 2012. Uh, and I started a consulting firm um, in 2015, also based in DC. We work in Latin America, mostly in the Caribbean, um, and our our mission is uh, to collect data. and uh, And we use different ways of doing that, particularly phone surveys, drone surveys, uh, in person uh, surveys, um, etc. Next slide. So today we're going to talk about drones and how drones can help the inform decision makers in the sector. So just a very quick background, uh, 30 seconds on how drone models work. Uh, essentially, when a drone flies over a space, the objects that are closer to the drone will move relative to the, will move relative to the camera faster. So if you fly over the building, for example, the Empire State Building, if you fly over it uh, with a camera, the top of the building will move much faster if you take multiple pictures than the floor of the building. Using this principle of optics, we're able to model uh, land areas, model topography, uh, and figure out which parts of the ground are higher up than other parts. And more or less, that's how we can get a 3D model from 2D pictures. Um, so essentially, uh, back, uh, let me go back a minute. So essentially, just um, to be as quickly as possible, the process of collecting a topographic model with drones is setting control points, which let us tell the model exactly how far the ground is from the drone. We then build a point cloud. We adjust the point cloud to the control points. We select checkpoints, which allow other people to verify the accuracy and the precision of the model. And then we build an orthophoto. Next slide. So now for the case of Santo Domingo. In Santo Domingo, we did the same process. We built a point cloud, we extracted an elevation model, and we built an orthophoto. Uh, however, we also were able to perform some analysis uh, on the models. Next slide. Um, sorry, yep. Uh, and... Um, And this includes modeling things like flood runoff, uh, or sorry, runoff and flooding, uh, and also to map change over time of the landfill. Uh, so as you can see on the map on the left, we have areas of high risk of flooding. And the thing about landfills is that because flooding generally moves some of the solid waste, uh, it introduces a higher risk to the population. Um, and so, Well, that's why we're, we're interested in modeling it. Um, and then on the right, we can take an older model. You can see it's a different shape because the first, uh, the model that we based it on was a different shape. And the darker areas indicate er areas that grew, so higher elevation values. Uh, this lets us see how over time the landfill is changing, how some areas are subsiding, how some areas are growing. Uh, and thus, when in the case of the Duquesa, El Vertedero Duquesa, lets us Um, have a better, more better information for the you know management of the landfill and eventually for the closing of the landfill. Next slide. We're going to quickly now chat, kind of rush through that a bit, but we're going to quickly now chat about some other case studies uh, and what we were able to do with drones, uh, particularly now in the north of Haiti uh, with the water and sanitation sector. So here we needed to use drones to solve a few problems that we had in the planning of the opening of a landfill. The first um, problem we had was we didn't understand how many beneficiaries would be using the landfill. So we needed population data. The second was for the planning of the routes for the trucks, we needed better data on the quality of the roads. 
Uh, and then the third is that the landfill itself needed a topographic model for engineers, for offsite engineers to do the planning of the buildings and the reception sites and, um, and of all of the facilities that were needed for a modern landfill. So next slide. So in the case of needing population data, uh, what we did here was the same as what I had explained earlier. We made a point cloud, an elevation model, and an orthophoto. In this case, the orthophoto was designed to give us a sense of where the distribution of buildings are. We still don't know the population inside each building, but if we know where the buildings are, we can have an idea of the distribution and we can classify the buildings based on a style. Uh, we can then do a random sample analysis of visiting the buildings in person, uh, a certain amount of buildings uh, for a representative sample. In this case, I think it was around five and a half percent of the buildings that we visited. Um, and with that, we're able to see a better distribution. Next slide. So here you can see the how we classified the buildings. Again, this was done with drone imagery. We were able to look at the informal areas, the peri-urban areas, and the urban areas, distinguish them, and then come up with an average population per building for each of the classified areas. Next slide. With that, we're able to go into the field, as I mentioned, uh, with some smartphones and clipboards, take uh, information about each building, visit the selected buildings, randomly selected buildings. And with that, we're able to, next slide, see what the population density is. And since in the case of Haiti, we haven't had a, a census conducted since 2013, uh, being able to collect data like this is, is very useful in having a more updated picture for what's happening in the country. Next slide. I think we have about a minute, so let's see if I can rush through this. Uh, we also needed to plan tr uh, routes for trucks and for kind of SU uh, collection sites or, or sub collection sites. Uh, so here we could also use drones and we could also use the point cloud to apply classification for the condition of each road. Next slide. So here you can see how our classification ended up looking. Uh, roads are generally not in great condition in, in, in Cap Haitian, but through it we were able to map out what uh, what roads would, sorry, what the quality of the roads would be, and essentially what roads should be avoided in order to cover the, the network relative to the sites of the sub-collection uh, facilities. Next slide. Lastly, I think I actually just hit my time. We also conducted a orthophoto and an elevation model of the landfill itself so we could plan um, infrastructure on the site. Uh, as I said, this is uh, done doing the same process of building a point cloud, building an elevation model. In this case, we extracted contour lines and cleaned up surface features, uh, but it's uh, meant to show that in general, when we use drones, we use them for the orthophotos and the elevation models, and then the analysis afterwards is really where interesting things start happening. Uh, last slide, uh, almost. And then lastly, just what's on the horizon for drones. All of the examples I gave were using a drone to carry a camera and a GPS and using surface-based differential GPS to confirm the accuracy. In the future, now we have something called an L1 uh, LiDAR, uh, which is mountable on, on kind of commercial grade drones. And we're now seeing and experimenting with methane leakage detectors that can also be mounted on drones that can help us map the distribution of methane leakage um, in a landfill. Next slide. So just to conclude, drones are useful. Uh, they can generate maps and 3D models. Uh, but if we want to extract as much meaningful information as possible, you need to perform some analysis. Uh, and you need to understand that drones have limitations and that you should generally, if you're using topographic models, you should check their accuracy and check their position with checkpoints. Um, and understand that moving drone maps around is also uh, very complicated in that drone maps tend to be very heavy and so infrastructure should be established and, and and sharing practices should be established before integrating this into into your workflows and i'm at nine minutes so i'm over a bit thank you so much <laughs> Thank you. Muchas gracias, Nicolás. Obrigado por la presentación. Nos queda muy Thank you very much, Nicolás. We have just a few minutes and also our Zoom connection will finish. The last thing to comment is about a challenge we have 
concerning innovation. Uh, this is a close challenge for smart technologies on uh, waste management. We want to contact um, providers with difficulties, problems, or ideas for solutions. Um, and um, the idea is to have apps that have capacities uh, on this, and so they can contact them for pilot programs that can be scaled up. The innovation source uh, and the IDB would accompany this process in um, knowledge, uh, advisory, et cetera. And there's a $30,000 support fund complementary to resources that the provider would put to the, for this challenge. We have three stages, a pitch of uh, service providers in just a few weeks where they will call the startups and uh, tell them about their problems and dreams. The second is the inverse uh, pitch. The startups tell providers and us uh, about their proposals. And the last one is the uh, construction of the challenge where we choose the two uh, winners that the bank will support with this resource, uh, plus what the providers will uh, invest for a pilot project to be successful and to be scaled up. Uh, we'll leave this a few seconds. You'll have the QRs for the link so you can uh, answer to this call, uh, whether as uh, technology providers or as uh, waste, uh, solid waste um, uh, management providers. Uh, so uh, now I will leave you with Paula questions and answers were answered online in the Q&A, and you have the emails um, there too if you need additional information. Paula, I pass you the floor for the closing words. Thank you very much, Alfredo, and everyone for being here. We leave all this uh, uh, to you. Thank you very much for your interest in these smart uh, technologies and solid waste. See you uh, soon. Thank you very much. See you soon.